morning, it's just gone six o'clock. I'm Jeremy Kyle. And I'm Nicola Thorpe. Welcome to Talk Today. People of Britain, do you fancy a good dose of common sense before bed? Because the Independent Republican Mike Graham is now in prime time. We still cover all the stories that matter and put the world to rights. We just do it a little bit later on. So don't miss the Independent Republican Mike Graham Monday to Thursday nights at 9pm, right after Piers Morgan Uncensored. Yes, the revolution will be televised. Well, hello and a warm welcome to The Talk. I'm Daisy McAndrew. Tonight, the police will form a ring of steel around remembrance events this weekend with the cenotaph under 24-hour guard. More Rishi Sunak back or sack Suella Braverman as backlash builds over her stance on the pro-Palestinian protests. And King Charles makes a major change to his main charity, suggesting William and Harry won't have anything to do with it. Joining me on the panel tonight are Penny Smith and Kevin O'Sullivan, and JJ Anasiobi and Isabel Oakshaw. First off, though, let's get the latest news from Zora Solomon. Thanks, Daisy. Good evening. London's Met Police confirm more than 2,000 officers will be deployed to police this weekend's Armistice Day events. It follows calls for the Prime Minister to sack the Home Secretary, Suala Braverman, who slated the police for allowing pro-Palestinian demos to go ahead this weekend. Meanwhile, counter-terror police are investigating a deepfake video of London's mayor about Remembrance Sunday. The video falsely claims Remembrance Sunday should be moved to make room for for pro-Palestinian marches. Well, this evening, police have told Talk TV that the video is now being assessed by specialist officers. Thousands are fleeing northern Gaza following reports of intense clashes and open fire at Al-Shifa Hospital in Gaza. This comes despite Israel agreeing to a daily four-hour pause to allow people to escape. President Biden will hold face-to-face -face talks with President Xi of China next week in an effort to reduce tensions between the rival superpowers. The US president is also expected to warn Xi not to attempt to meddle in next year's US elections. The former NatWest boss, Dame Alison Rose, will miss out on around £7.6 million in pensions payouts after she was forced to quit over the debanking round with Nigel Farage. But she will still get over £3 million worth of pay and shares. And the number of drivers who reported breakdowns because of potholes has hit a record high. The RAC says there's been a 46% increase compared to this time last year. And the company owned by Hollywood Oscar winner Robert De Niro has been ordered to pay his former personal assistant more than a million pounds in damages after Graham Chase Robinson sued him for 12 million pounds following allegations she was being abused and underpaid. Well, that's the latest. Now back to Daisy and the talk. Zora, thank you very much. Now, first tonight, the Metropolitan Police says they'll form a ring of steel around remembrance events this weekend. Over 70,000 people are expected to flock to London tomorrow for pro-Palestinian demonstrations as veterans will gather to commemorate fallen servicemen and women for Armistice Day. March organisers say they'll stay away from the Cenotaph, but there are fears football hooligans are also planning to descend on the capital. Despite initial pressure from Number 10, Metropolitan Chief Sir Mark Rowley says he legally has no power to stop pro-Palestine marches. More than 1,000 additional officers from across the UK are being drafted in to support the 2,000-strong Met Police presence. There'll be exclusion zones around key remembrance sites and a 24-hour police presence at the Cenotaph. Now, it comes as there's criticism of some attending the weekly marches as they appear to have very little knowledge of the conflict. When Hamas invaded Israel on the 7th of October, what was your initial reaction to that? Uh, I didn't believe they did, did they, Hamas? I think so. I, honestly, like, I think I need to be a bit more clued up on like everything that's going on. So I feel like I'm not really qualified to answer that too well. I mean, I'm not sure if I've seen anything that actually shows that that's actually happened or actually correct. Well, it actually did happen and it actually was correct. And 
listening to those absolute morons is very <laughs> depressing. Of course it is. I mean, the only thing I'm kind of clinging on to is if you go and do Vox Pop in any very large crowd, you will find some very, very, you know, <laughs> ill-educated people. However, the, the, the substance of what they were saying, as in the massacre at the music festival, probably didn't happen. That is worse yeah. than idiotic. I mean, that's a very, very damaging thing to say. So, so putting that to one side, the, just tonight, obviously, I think most of us, most people in London and around the country are anxious about mm. what's going to happen tomorrow. There is a high level of anxiety. There's a high chance um, of some trouble. I think the police are in an incredibly difficult situation. A, they've got their own Home Secretary, who we would all hope in, you know, would be on their side and would be working as a team with uh, the Metropolitan Police. That clearly isn't happening. We saw Suella Braverman yesterday saying the police are picking sides and have favourites. So, so we'll, we'll you know, obviously discuss. And then there's the policing challenge. They're saying that the two sets of marchers, the armistice veterans, are going to be kept a mile away from the Palestine, the pro-Palestine marches. And we know that there, there will be, as, you know, as most of us are well aware, there will be bad people coming to London to have a fight yeah. tomorrow. Well, apparently not. Apparently not. According to Sir Mark Rowley, there's no credible threat to public safety. Uh, this comes uh, hand in hand with the fact we learned today that according to police intelligence, there's going to be trouble. And that's why he has called in, you know, a thousand extra officers from around the country, cancelled all leave and uh, vowed to form a ring of steel around the Sen cenotaph. What in all of that uh, leads to a man saying there's not going to be any well, trouble? Well, he's saying the yeah. bar isn't there's, there's high enough. The, what that's a load ridiculous. of rubbish. The guy wants this march to go ahead because like most cops, he's pro -power. Palestine. It's as simple as that. Well, there I, is so much evidence really? to show that is police, that police pro favor, they no. favor left-wing demonstrators. Yeah, no, well, it's, about like the it's about the legal. It's about the legal. It's about the legal bar. Absolute you can't go rubbish. round, Kevin. <laughs> what you are, really, what is this Kevin? Let Penny speak. You really cannot have a government, have a country where you just pick and choose the laws that you that, that you decide whether you're going to abide by or not, yeah. Kevin. Really, that way well, anarchy lies. I'm in favour of hang the march going ahead. I'm in favour of the pro-Palestine right. march because I believe in the right to protest. I don't like the yes. idea of it. I, I'm against but, it, but I'm in right. favour of the march. I just don't understand what, what when Rowley says there's no credible threat of trouble, yeah. what the hell he thinks he's talking it, about. As I said, it's this about the legal gonna, threshold. It's, it's um, going mean, to kick off. I... It's going to kick off. He'll be out of a job by Wednesday. Well, I'll tell you what is going to happen. Sorry, sorry, Isabel. All I was going to say is I, um, that, that the organisers are saying that this could be half a million people. Well, we shall see whether it's half a million people. But if one single person who is involved in the Armistice Day uh, uh, commemorations is even remotely hurt or in any way, shape or form, are you honest, do you honestly think that the police will not come down on them like a ton of bricks? No, but I'm just, saying, I'm just saying, why does he say he has told the Prime Minister <clears throat> that he sees no credible threat of significant trouble Which is tomorrow. clearly ridiculous. He's the only person on the country, as you say, Isabel, absolutely ridiculous. So, so Penny, why let's just pick up on the legal point okay. that you made, because what is in the uh, Met Police's gift is to actually apply to the Home Secretary for a banning yeah. order. And as Kevin says, they claim that there is an insufficient threshold. The words they actually used were insufficient intelligence to suggest that there was a serious threat of disorder or threat to security. So they're not going to apply to the Home Secretary yeah. to make yes. that ruling. Now, I don't think you need any kind of technical intelligence. <laughs> All you need here is common sense, OK? You've got an awful lot of people coming to London on a very sensitive time, on a very sensitive day, mm -hmm. the eve of Remembrance Sunday, Armistice Day. You've got tensions running incredibly high. We know that there are a number of very unsavoury characters from many oh, different sorry. organisations yeah. yep. who are coming. Yeah. This has disaster written all over it, and I think there's been a terrible failure of leadership, both from the Met and from the Home Secretary. And actually, frankly, the buck stops with Rishi Sunak. He could have got a grip of it. Where has he been? He's invisible. Well, I think um, normally you have about 20,000 people who come down for armistice. Mm. So if there's another, the, the, when they say that in terms of intelligence, there's enough people coming down that the police can handle 
We're not going to have 500,000 pro-Palestinian people in the march and 500,000 um, people to defend the yeah. cenotaph. There's enough for them to control. I bet it's not half a million, by the way. Maybe it's half a million. Yeah, but, well, but, we but said it could be, you know, it could somebody be, was saying it's 70,000. There's enough so there are police huge to control yeah. what's happening at the moment. If And I, I've said I think they should cancel the march, not be banned. I think they should cancel it out of respect for the weekend. Mm. However, The organisers. The organisers should, should cancel it. However, if they if the government inter inter interjected and banned it, they cannot. They can ban the march. They cannot ban people from gathering. So what you'd have That's instead correct. is everyone going down there regardless and being stuck in one place. And we're definitely going to. And trouble. this is exactly what um, a lot of police insiders are saying. They are saying the reason the police don't want to ban it is because they know the marches will still come. And when they come to a stagnant, static gathering rather than a march then in some ways the police who are there have a duty to arrest them all. If there are tens of thousands of people... <laughs> it's a lot of that, haven't no, they, no, so no, far? No, but the point no, is they're saying if, if there are tens of thousands nine. of people, it's physically impossible for the police to do that. So the police think the safer thing to do is to let the march happen. I think what we can all agree is what has happened in recent days has massively raised the stakes. It's drummed up a huge amount of publicity, so this thing will be a lot bigger than it would otherwise have been. Anyway... And Suella Bravman. Is that? There we go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Suella Bravman hasn't shied away from her strong stance on the weekend marches. And her political future at this point is somewhat hanging in the balance after she accused the police of playing favourites with protest groups. Her article in The Times was reportedly not cleared by Number 10 and resulted in Tory WhatsApp groups going into overdrive. Now, backbenchers, a number of them, seem to think she's toast uh, and she's, uh, the, her outburst has been described as unhinged by some particularly excitable anonymous sources. Uh, Chancellor Jeremy Hunt, for his part, has refused to back her earlier today. Well, as many other cabinet ministers have said, uh, the words that she used are not words that I myself would have used, but I have a productive relationship with her as a colleague and I've always given her the money that she needs uh, to fund the police, bring down crime and to fund the immigration and asylum system. Well, the Prime Minister has said that he has full confidence in her and I have nothing further to add. I think that's what's known at Westminster as a very lukewarm uh, <laughs> praise for her there. And the Prime Minister says he still has full confidence in her and it's reported he's wanting to keep her close because she is able to say the things that he can't. And she represents the views of many Tory voters, which is absolutely true. I don't actually think it's uh, the case that Rishi Sunak couldn't be saying some of the things that Suella Braverman is saying, but no doubt it is useful for him to have her there and to carry the can if and when this whole thing goes horribly wrong. In terms of the way that Jeremy Hunt responded when he was asked about it, um, the weird thing about Westminster, and you'll know this, Daisy, because you work there as well, these um, cabinet ministers, they speak in code, oh, yeah. don't they? So when they kind of skirt around it and sort of say, well, those aren't the words I would have used, that's basically saying, oh, my God, what on earth has she done? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, exactly. And, and sort of say, some people would say this, well, mm. you know, I couldn't possibly comment. Basically, that is a big slap down. It's distancing yeah. himself. Um, I'm not altogether surprised. Those two are on really different sides yes. of the Tory party. You know, if you see the party as a, a kind of range of, of views, Hunt would be on the left and she's nearer the right. So no surprise there. Um, and I don't think that Sunak, I mean, I could be wrong very quickly, but I'd be very surprised if he sacks her um, in the next few days. But I, I imagine that when it comes to a reshuffle, a wider reshuffle, which he may find an excuse for I sooner than later, she might he, be moved. But why would he want to reshuffle at this stage when next year we're going to be into election central? So he's got why that, you... precisely that. So a traditional time to do a reshuffle is, would probably be the new year um, because you're then into election year. We know we've got to have an election next year. I mean, he's not going to run it to January 2020. Five, which is like the last possible gasp. So I would have thought it's conceivable that yeah. there would be a reshuffle I mean, then. Many people think she wants to be sacked, as you, as you said as well, she's that got, she's sort she's of, you know, come on, this. Come, come on if you think you're hard enough. Yeah. Is that something? Because I am, you want to I be am hard enough. So because you can, because oh, you can go okay. to the back benches. And one of the big, big things that's happening next week is the Supreme Court decision on Rwanda. Rwanda. Yeah. That's happening on Wednesday. Ooh. Lots of people saying Rishi Sunak's waiting to see whether they win or lose that case. And if they win it, he may well feel uh, he can get rid of... 
Suella Braverman because it's sort of job done and that he can say, look how clever I am, I've done that. Yes. And if they lose it, then that might be an opportunity either for her to say, I'm now, you know, and, and continue this sack me, sack me if you're brave enough, or he might actually sack her. Then, as you said, Kevin, she can go to the back benches and say, you know, this government is useless. If you want to deal with immigrants, I'm your girl. Mm -hmm. And we've already seen the battle is between Kemi Badenoch, James Cleverly, um, and Suella Braverman. And those are three names you're going to hear a lot about in the but next few months. This, the situation we're in now, uh, this is Britain at its most mad, at its most absurd. <laughs> uh, we have a, a Home Secretary who said what a lot of people think. Yeah. Uh, there is clear evidence that the police do show favouritism towards yeah. left-wing uh, demonstrators, yeah. uh, the pro-Palestine, uh, Just Stop Oil, etc., and clear evidence uh, that they're far more harsh with the right-wing. Two weeks ago, why, for example, did they say to uh, pro-Israeli demonstrators, you can't demonstrate because the pro-Palestinians are marching through London? So they said, OK, can we have a demonstration amid the Jewish community in Gold? as green in northern no 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 that's far too close seven miles it is uh so you've got clear there's clear evidence yeah. that they do favor uh uh left wing demonstrators so wait a minute so she says this in the times honor and the whole establishment throw up their arms and go how could you it's possibly ridiculous. suggest that the police are in any well, way buying because they are but with yeah. the with the pro-palestinian protest they put in the paperwork my understanding of the, of the Israeli protesters is they hadn't submitted paperwork. Oh, it, 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 it wasn't. On. We, we have laws and regulations. You follow them. Do. That's um, it. That's just it. Just you follow them. Everybody doesn't throw. like no, a rule and a regulation. Exactly. Well, I'm so... just very confused that all my life I have grown up with being told by everybody, left, right, and centre, police are right wing. And then all of a sudden I'm. Yeah, like, suddenly they're left wing. <laughs> suddenly the police are left wing. It's <laughs> yeah. very like, odd. No, I'm just Indians. saying it's a very like odd I don't think it's established. I don't think this is about. Can I just say that I don't think this is about them instituting institutionally being left wing or, wing or right wing. It is about the fear at the top of the organisation of the power of the media when you get things wrong mm -hmm. and particularly the fear of the establishment when you get things wrong that upset the left. Mm. That's what I think this is. I think it's absurd to imagine that the police are institutionally left wing, but they know that on issues of political correctness, if they get yes, it wrong, there is, all hell breaks there, loose. There is a fear from the police that they will appear racist so if they, they the come down way. hard on some minority so the and other so way. there is there is right. a, i mean i think that's that's a well trodden path that, yeah. that but if we understand about the minorities it couldn't be a more more of a minority than the than the jewish people in britain yeah. Yeah. of course, of course. Of course. Minority. Mm. but in other words uh, daisy Suella's right so as uh, david well, frost, as david frost said you know you get an, a, a politician people say why can't politicians be honest and yeah. authentic well, so you get one that is and everybody goes how dare you no. well, like, David like, the, 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 what, she, <clears throat> what her sentiment uh, is fine. It's the way that she says things. That is not the way a politician should speak. The way she this speaks. Is, this is, is, is the problem. The, 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 the problem is that she's become a commentator rather than a leader. And she well, and she is saying, I wish, I wish somebody would sort government. the police out. Well. She's the Home Secretary, so she should sort it out. Anyway, yeah. moving on, <laughs> coming up, the former boss of NatWest will lose out on a whopping £7.6 million payout after the Nigel Farage debanking scandal. That's next here on The Talk.
Welcome back to the talk. New figures released today show the UK economy has flatlined, but it did manage to dodge the predicted recession. Uh, GDP increased by 0.2% month on month in September, beating analysts' expectations and lifting the imminent threat of recession. But forecasters suggest the economy is set to remain stagnant for several more months. Uh, the figures have reinforced the challenge facing Jeremy Hunt ahead of the autumn statement in two weeks' time, with the Chancellor warning high inflation remains the main obstacle to growth. He's now faced with a decision whether to stimulate business growth or consumer spending via tax cuts, an option he is consistently ruling out uh, to the dismay of conservative backbenchers. I mean, this is the point. You saw this sort of lacklustre King speech. The King speech was incredibly boring, made even more boring by the King's delivery. I mean, God, that was the cure. That was the biggest cure. That was the biggest cure for insomnia seen in all year. However, however, it, 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 it produced. Look, would you like, please? <laughs> I'm being important and, you know, clever here. A, that'll be the day. No, seriously. Tell, tell us when that bit starts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It'll be in about 20 years' time. I'll be dead by then. No, uh, seriously, uh, the, spe the uh, King's speech was so lacking in content, so dull, that it has brought about a crescendo of cries from backbenchers saying, look, you've got to do something conservative. Uh, you've got to cut taxes partly uh, to uh, appeal to the electorate and partly because this e economy is dying on its backside mm. and people need more money in their pockets. I mean, this chancellor is all very well. We're going to balance the books. We've got to be careful. We've got to be careful. As we're seeing, the economy is tanking and he's got to do but something. But how much of that is his responsibility and how much of that is because interest rates were put up too yeah. much as a response to try to, well, to, to bring inflation down? But, of course, what it's done is bring confidence down. Nobody's borrowing. Nobody's Nobody's spending, nobody's investing. And I was looking at that the, the housing market was the first to shrink. That's mm. always what you expect when interest rates mm -hmm. go up and when the economy is doing uh, really badly. But now it's it's trickling into you know, investment, business investment, you know, consumer confidence, all those things. And they do, I was looking at the housing um, situation and weirdly there haven't been that many uh, repossessions, even though the housing market has gone down so badly. That's, do you know, there are now more people in this country, because the population has aged so much, who have paid off their mortgage than people who are paying their mortgages, which I found a that's that's staggering because, And statistic. also, that's because loads of people can't even afford to get on the property right. market. Exactly. They're spending all their money renting. renting. Exactly. Yeah. So you've got this sort of squeezed middle Tiny of people bit. who do have mortgages. But actually, statistically, they're not that... It isn't as big a number as you would expect, exactly. is it? I mean, th there are incredibly striking figures, which I'm not now going to recite because I can't remember them, <laughs> um, but showing a <laughs> massive contraction in the number of transactions. Yes, so yes. sales transactions, yeah, yeah. Um, because linked to the shrinking of the mortgage market. I mean, it's just become incredibly difficult right now to actually get a mortgage. And it also takes months and months and months and, and months. And people are so frightened. And, and anyone with any, you know, who doesn't have to move or buy now is likely thinking, Thinking, well, I'll leave this for a six months and hope things get better. And as we all know, when the property market kind of seizes up, you know, an awful lot of things stem from that. Yeah, exactly, I mean, I think including things Hunt, like buying Hunt furniture and other. to cut taxes. I mean, you this see, is does, people you are see, absolutely getting so clobbered. Explain to me, though, how tax cuts in a situation when everybody is counting pennies, when people are literally kind of turning their temp the, the, the temperature down to try and sort of save money on, on heating bills and everything, how does tax cuts actually end its way into any at all apart from bill paying. Well, pe which, well people will people pay less money. tax, people so people will have no. more, I know more money have, in, no, their, in their... Listen, I understand, sorry, I do understand. I even did economics A-level, for goodness sake. How many times have did I told you, you that? O-level. I <laughs> did. No, A-level. And yes, I did pass. But what I'm saying oh, is, unless the tax cuts are really big, all that happens is it doesn't fuel spending in terms of going but out but and if it's people... corporation tax that's one of the that will make a big rather than income difference tax. and you've also got to encourage businesses to invest yeah. in the uk yeah. if mm. your corporation tax is not going down but being shot up from 18 to 25 but it's where do you rates. think global companies are yeah. going to go but they're not going to choose as well, the uk it's rates it's rates, it's, rates, yeah. it's, so yeah. much, it's, yeah. it's, it's all these so we things, should be cutting all them all you know right. as many as we can that's otherwise what is the point of brexit you're not mm. gonna, we're not going to build a global Britain 
by taxing companies what, to high heaven. What, what yeah. have this lot... I mean, you know, they've got a year or so left. What have they got to lose? Give it a go. Yeah, that's Stop right. being so yeah, that's scared that's of everything. That's anyway, what Kwarteng said. Staying, <laughs> staying oh, with well, financial... He had, a, he had some good ideas. Can you not just get back in your pocket? <laughs> <laughs> we can carry on talking about money because we're going to stay with that theme and talking about the Farage fiasco that engulfed NatWest, which has cost the former boss pretty dearly. She missed out on a £7.6 million payout. Uh, that's Dame Alison Rose, and she's still going to receive her £2.4 million <laughs> fixed pay package, so not too many little violins for her. Um, <laughs> but she will not get the share awards and bonuses that she'd previously been entitled to. Uh, now, Dame Alison Rose resigned in July after she spoke to a journalist about closing Nigel Farage's bank account with Coots, which is owned by Nat West. The former Brexit Party leader said the lower payout would be a good decision for taxpayers, with the government still owning 39% of the bank. In a statement on social media, Farage said, don't feel sorry for Dame Alison Rose, adding that she will still receive a seven-figure sum. She says she accepts the decision and was pleased that there were no findings of misconduct, adding that it had brought the matter to a close. A pretty bad day at the office for our Alison, wasn't it? I mean, she is substantially worse off than she thought she would be. I think there would have been, there should have been and would have been an outcry if she'd received all of that money. This is taxpayers' money to a considerable extent because the taxpayer still owns a large part of that bank. She breached a huge rule uh, on confidentiality. You can't go gabbing about people's <laughs> private bank accounts when you're at dinner parties and nice little salons with BBC journalists. And if you do, don't get caught. Yeah. Right. And <laughs> By I the think... way, don't lie. She lied. <laughs> yeah. she and lied. I think that it also shows the power, how, how the extent to which you can change things when you're not an elected politician. So people are continually kind of um, disdaining uh, Farage because he's never managed to win a seat. He's fought a number of elections. He's never, ever managed to get himself to Parliament, it is incredibly difficult in a first-past-the-post mm -hmm. system. I would say he's having far more effect out of Parliament than the vast majority of politicians have in it. He is changing things and, you know, that impact that he had today on the payout or not payout for <laughs> Alison Rose was purely as a result, frankly, of his journalism and it's his about, digging. It's not about, it wasn't really his journalism. And you talk, it was, because he asked for the... You, he, you, he pushed yeah, to the, get the, the record. But that is not just journalism. Anyone can, can do an FOI. The point, you, you talk about Farage... It's not an it, FOI. No, listen, you talk about it Farage wasn't. as if he's just a normal person in the street. He's on television, he's on papers, he's got a huge audience on social media. The former UKIP leader is a Brexit voice... Brexit party leader. And also UKIP. The former UKIP leader is a massive force in this country, but you speak about him as if he's just, just this average guy who's taken the fight. I know he's never been elected, but he still has a lot of power and a lot of influence. No, yeah, of yeah, and he, and he, he, and he took that. Alison Rose to the cleaners. Let's uh, talk about this. The scandal of this, it remains that Nat West, when she was caught lying, she lied to uh, the BBC, to the, their economics editor, about... Uh, why Nigel Farage's accounts were yeah. being debanked. She said it was just because he hasn't got enough money. It wasn't, wasn't true. true. It was a lie. And she shouldn't be discussing his private uh, accounts either. That's a sacred banking code. Mm. So she broke two bad codes there. Uh, and until recently, she was classified by NatWest uh, as a good lever. And that is why she was going to get yeah. uh, the best part of Which £11 million. Pounds. Uh, when they started to say uh, well, it wasn't just the public, it was also, of course, NatWest shareholders saying, hang on, she's brought Coots and NatWest into disrepute. Why are we giving her £11, 11 million? Pounds? The chairman of NatWest said, oh, because she's marvellous, we've got to give her this. Uh, <laughs> she's, she's since been downgraded. She is no longer a good lever, and therefore she's lost all of this money. They've been forced into this position, and uh, the question we have to ask is, why did NatWest ever think she was worth her full payoff? I think, the wider, I think the, the, the wider question is, is anybody who's working for an institution which is funded by the taxpayer to a degree 
worth £11 yeah. million. Pounds. I and I would what, say, what the absolutely heck? not. I, What's think, that all I about? think that's outrageous. Well, don't we come back to that, that point about, we, we've said it before, about, about bonuses and about how yep. companies, people at the top of companies, which uh, uh, are given these staggering sums of money, yep. even though terrible things are happening. I mean, Indeed. we've talked about water companies. And on and on it goes, yeah, doesn't water it? Well, companies, speaking of multi-million pound losses, Robert De Niro's ex-assistant has won $1.2 million after a court found she was discriminated against. We've got the details of that high-profile case next on The Talk. We're here! Good morning, everybody! Hope you're well. Thanks for joining us. You're watching The Independent Republic of Mike Graham right here on Talk TV. Welcome to Friday Night with Nadine. Here on Primetime, we like to speak to the business people behind big moments. Good evening, I'm Piers Morgan, Uncensored, in New York City. Very impressive. Well played. I'm three days into the job. What have I done wrong? Yeah. And your face just stared <laughs> out at me. Ah. Me and you, conquer time. Who that wins? Happens. You. <laughs> Do you know what I love about tour today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. Are you actually speech rating for Rishi Sunak? I'm so rich. <laughs> <laughs> uh, frankly, uh, I'm going to take the side of boozed up Brits against these pompous. What do you mean you're not going to support Mayor Jose no, Luis Sanz? No, I Sanz. am not. Stop pandying to the NIMBYs, to the naysayers, and the National Society for the preservation of the habitat of the lesser spotted newt. The problem lies in the bureaucracy. Well, it's almost like those highly paid consultants don't really know what they're doing. First thing they teach you in weather school is never confuse dog walkers with doggers. Twitter, you sons of <laughs> <laughs> Can you please reinstate my account? Yeah, Thank you. There's a threat that you'd be worried about. <gasps> so are you saying that you're being overwhelmed, that you're inundated? We are really working hard for you. We're just asking patients to be patient with us. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google and Facebook and X, uh, formerly known as Twitter? Where is, our, where is our unbiased news going to come from? Welcome to the talk. It's really great to be back. My little darlings. Mm -hmm. Kids think all they have to do is stay at home, be silly, mm -hmm. take pictures of everything. Just shut down TikTok then, yeah? Problem oh, solved. Yeah. Problem solved. There you go. He's fit as a butcher's dog. Him. Oh, right. <laughs> but, but he's now middle class. Three of us here, Tess. But I nearly have empathy when I'm speaking to them. I know now you're probably going to boot me off the show after saying <laughs> this now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kevin O'Sullivan is the worst presenter on talk TV. <laughs> Sitting on his fat ass <laughs> talking for a living. <laughs> got former PMs all over the joint saying things the last few days. They have indeed, <laughs> yeah. Great first show, you having fun? Oh, a ton of fun. Yeah. King Piers and King Cube. <laughs> I think it's only room for one king, man, you know what I'm saying? Just because they're skin folk don't mean they're kin folk. When I say I am God, you think I'm joking or not? You tell me. I'm not joking. Well, I'd rather do it on camera. No. no, 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 no. If it's on camera, we're not doing the interview. Why? We'll explain why. How do you feel about that influence that you have? You better be careful. We're coming for your children there, buddy. About my resignation, yes, I'm going to go. I'm you're, going to, you're going to resign? Yeah, I'm going. I've been answering your question, you answer mine. It's actually not my job to answer your questions. Thank God for Talk TV is not only the home of common sense, it's the only place where you get the truth. This is Talk TV. Welcome back to The Talk. That's a wrap on Robert De Niro's blockbuster lawsuit against his former personal assistant, Graham Chase Robinson. She's won $1.2 million from the actor's company, Canal Productions. And although De Niro himself wasn't found personally liable, his company has been ordered to pay damages for gender discrimination. The allegations could pass for the plot of a movie. Robinson claimed De Niro treated her as his office wife, giving her stereotypically female tasks like asking her to scratch his back as well as making vulgar, inappropriate, and gendered comments. She originally filed a $12 million lawsuit, and De Niro's lawyers were countersuing for $6 million, alleging Robinson stole millions of air miles and spent tens of thousands of dollars on Uber rides. The jury cleared Robinson of all these claims, and her lawyer said he doubts the pair will ever speak again. Mm -hmm. Duh. Perhaps he's not such a good fella after uh... all. Uh, I didn't write that. I just read it. <laughs> Um, I know it's not De Niro's, his company, so to speak, but the guy, he's personally worth about half a billion. 
this is a drop in the ocean. He's got loads of smart lawyers and accountants. They'll find some way to do this as a tax write-off. And I don't think it's actually this has tarnished his reputation at all, really. I, don't, I, I know that she's made all these lurid claims about him, but I don't think in the wider public in Hollywood, I don't think anyone cares. This is not a, a Me Too movement. Don't, don't you think that actually all this... I mean, I, you just look at this and you go, why did he bother to go to court? Why not just pay her off? Because so she took him to court. Oh, sorry, she took him to court. Yeah, but yeah. why didn't you do... He, he had to go. Because all the end of the day... Good point. Good point, good point. But at the same time, you just think, why didn't he just negotiate because beforehand Penny, and just say... Because, Penny, because otherwise it's just open that. season to everybody and everybody who wants to try to take their employer, if they've got profile and money, they just make up any old thing and then you, you never... It'll never end. So on a point of principle, he had to fight this. She was there for 10 years if it was that bad being his office yeah. wife why didn't she leave yeah none of what i've read and heard about what he she was asked to do and admittedly i'm not going to say i've done a deep dive on this sorry <laughs> tawdry <laughs> case but it doesn't sound like it was too hard i mean i've been I asked to do way worse things in my time do you know what i suppose the interesting thing is really is that it's just a window into yeah that's uh, all the, it the, is the, sort of really yeah. the really rich and what they expect people to do for them which is essentially it's like the sort of you know it was years bad. and years ago finding out about prince charles having somebody else put the toothpaste on the toothbrush you know you just <laughs> that is do you remember and everybody in details <laughs> like, like the yeah. fact that she had to cross I think it was New York, um, and hand deliver at him a martini from Nobu. That's right. Which he, which his which, which his, he, his he took took in his in his pajamas. I yeah. mean, they're kind of funny, but I sort of agree with you. That, I've I read, mean, no, exactly. I mean, some of it was bad. You know, he, she was at her grandmother's funeral and was constantly being pestered yeah. by him during that. Well, that's called well, turning well, your phone off. Take, isn't take, it? Time, I yeah, mean, take your time off work. You, no, <laughs> well, that's another thing she said that if she ever didn't answer him, that all hell broke loose and that he was. You know, very aggressive and difficult to work with. I mean, he sounds like a difficult man, yeah. like Shouty. somebody that you wouldn't want to work with. <laughs> a man of the past. But she stayed yeah. 10 years. I don't think he's quite. She stayed exactly. 10 years. She stayed 10 years. By the way, she anyone like a wants to Not pay me $300,000? dollars a year to scratch their back. And hands to Martini. Oh, I'm up yeah, yeah, for it. I'm up for it. I'm up for it. Now, not every octogenarian's life can be as dramatic as Robert De Niro's, but if you'd like to live a long life, then England's chief medical officer, Professor Sir Chris Whitty, has some advice. The bottom line is that when it comes to... Sorry, oh, you're over there. Uh, when it comes to healthy habits, the old ones are the best. Lots of exercise, mental stimulation and a social network are key, plus eating a reasonably balanced diet and stopping smoking. Uh, making sure the elderly are regularly visited by friends and relatives can even stave off loneliness and reduce the risk of premature death. Now, the University of Glasgow study suggests visiting grandparents at least once a month to make sure they see the benefits, of course, unless they don't like you or you don't like them, which, of course, presumably negates all the benefits. Um, all I would say to this is... Wow. No, you <laughs> know, I mean, Sherlock would have been going... I just think, you know, this, it, it, of course... You know, was yeah. it was ever thus? It's never been different, has it? Exercise You're supposed to you live. exercise, not don't be obese, don't smoke, yeah. don't be sedentary. I mean, you know, the, I tell you what, the only interesting thing about about sort of you know the the fact that we are get, becoming an older country. Um, I was looking at America. In ten years' time, America will have more of the population over 65 than under 18 for the first time in its history. And as we know, we often kind of follow the same sort of curves, don't we? Don't and so, we'll die from obesity anyway, so it's fine. But that's the thing, isn't it? Is the fact that actually, <laughs> you know, you can either have weights. a... You can try to have a better older age by actually following these rules. Really, which brilliant have been advice from Chris Whitty, though, isn't it? Well, you know, know in, in other news, Hello, the Sherlock. chief, the chief medical uh, yeah. uh, officer is advising us not to take... Fast quantities of heroin. <laughs> you know, don't do the cocaine. You know, I mean, you know, oh, thanks, it. Chris. This oh, being I the see. same. I see. So if you take a bit of exercise and you eat sensibly, you might live a bit longer. That's why he gets yeah. the big yeah, yeah, this being the same chief bonus. medical officer who presided exactly. over elderly people being locked away in care homes on their own for periods of literally months yes. on mm. end, not seeing a soul. I'm not taking but any at lessons least, from but him. Yeah, exactly if, if, right. If he, is, if he is saying that the, the fact that our population is ageing 
is a massive challenge for politicians mm. and for scientists and whoever it is. I think we can all agree that is correct. And this other report saying that you know, loneliness, uh, if you are lonely, you are more likely to die earlier than if you are yeah. not. You know, it seems to me that there are policies that need to be put in place to look after old people, to make sure that they aren't as infirm and obese as, as most of, you know, many of them are gearing up to be, not only because it's no fun for them, but it's it's so expensive for the nation and for taxpayers to be funding for that, for mm. looking after the older generation. It just seems to me that it is an important about issue. Being able to, and, and the other thing is, is the more we can stay in our own homes, uh, and, and then the better it is as well. And rather have than, a reason for living. So there have been some yes. really interesting um, experiments, for example, in care homes, I think in, in the Netherlands, um, where Very elderly cute, residents were given oh, each yeah. given a bird to look after, oh. a budgie or something mm -hmm. like that. And once they had a reason that they had to every day, they had to try and look after the bird, make it happy, do what you do for a caged bird, I don't know what that mm. is. It had a very demonstrable impact on morale. For yeah, those but they've done that thing as well, what yeah, you were saying, Jordan, Jake. Yes. Yeah, and we do see mm. um, elderly people living longer when they are living in intergenerational homes with their Yeah, that's so interesting. Yeah. And in yeah. fact, there, there are moves towards um, intergenerational even when it's not actually relative. So mm. you've got students sharing with an old person, well, which exactly. works for and, everybody. And we've got a massive housing crisis. Yeah. And you've got a lot of yeah. older people in, Three bedroom Ra rattling homes. around yeah. in houses where they could have students, yeah. and you could be. Uh, I, love I was that. about to say I killing two birds with one stone, but that sounds yeah. inappropriate. I'll be even with Kevin. Yeah, <laughs> I'll, be in a, I'll be in a care home soon. So, uh, I'll look forward to seeing you visiting you. That really does <laughs> sound like a sitcom, doesn't it? Like, the idea of those two living together. Now, I have to tell you some breaking Lack news. Care home. Go, go, going back to um, the most important story, Kevin, be quiet. It's a good Honestly. joke. Don't care home. I like that. <laughs> Breaking news, Suella Bravman has met the head of the Met this afternoon and she's offered her full backing ahead of tomorrow's charge, um, marches. Um, obviously, we know that she wrote this article earlier in the week, but she's now said that she's giving him her full backing. Now, I just wonder, is that that she... I mean, if it all does go horribly wrong, and please, you know, nobody wants that tomorrow, she's sort of taken away her defence by giving him her backing. I think that's I think a very interesting twist. I, mess, I, really. can only, I can only presume that she's been presented with evidence that has, that has made her think, oh, it's actually going to go quite seamlessly. Let me try and get on the action now. I think it's more than that. I think she's been told by Sunak, either you make a conciliatory gesture to the police yeah. or you're out of here. I think that's... Mm. Yeah, I'm not sure if it was quite that ultimatum, but, you know but I think I mean. she would have come under a lot Something of pressure. Something along those lines. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, well, that, I mean... Uh, but that... what a turn That's a huge U-turn. <sighs> that is. It huge is. Huge U-turn. You can't write an article one minute like slating him and saying and, and have Sunak saying, it's on you, it's your responsibility. So and the words suddenly... that will be used tomorrow will be in a humiliating climb down. Yes. That's how it is. Yes. That's well, that's exactly, and, uh, and whether that that will make her look stronger or weaker. I, I think it is designed to make her look weaker. So yeah. that does bring us back to the battlegrounds, the machinations, the who's up, who's down, you know, and whether she's had her wings clipped, whether that, that then might force her into a resignation and how that might play out. But I to come back to your point, I think there are those in the Conservative Party, um, the, you know, the, the party members rather than the voters, who are on team uh, oh, Suella. Yeah, but, but, the but voters the, she, as she, well, I would she say. She keeps her job, doesn't she, now, mm -hmm. uh, because of this. Uh, and if it really kicks off at the weekend, if it really erupts, uh, uh, she will be able to say, uh, well, I did tell you, and uh, Rowley will be gone uh, pretty quickly if that mm. does happen tomorrow. All right, well... A lot to be seen between now and then. But coming up after the break, Buckingham Palace has revealed the Prince's Trust has been renamed the King's Trust. So William and Harry are unlikely to be taking over the reins of that charity anytime soon. That's next on The Talk.
Welcome back to the talk. Now, a change to the name of the Prince's Trust has led to speculation. Charles's sons won't take up the mantle from their old man as they focus on their own causes. Buckingham Palace has revealed it will become the King's Trust, showing Charles's commitment to carry on as patron of the organisation that aims to help young people get into jobs and education. Boasting success stories like Idris Elba, who used a grant to help launch his stellar acting career, and ambassadors like comedy duo Ant and Deck. Though Charles once spoke of the hope his sons would take over, that's now seen as unlikely as Will paves his own way, focusing on homelessness and the environment, and Harry carries on with the Invictus Games and other campaigns stateside. I think in some ways this is... A shame. I'm. I think the Prince's Trust has been one of Charles's Great greatest successes. achievement, Fantastic. probably the greatest achievement of his very, very long apprenticeship to getting on uh, to the throne. And and I like the idea that it's a sort of slightly younger person's yeah. organisation. And in some ways, isn't he? Isn't he Charles going to be too busy to That's keep an eye? Looking. To keep an eye on it. Why would you? Why would you bother? Also, right up until July, they were saying they're not going to change it. It's going to be the Prince's Trust. And also, why change a brand? Why I the agree brand with is, you about that. The brand is, is so it's solid. Yeah, it's it's so it? well recognised. But now, it is. But now right, for King's absolutely. Trust, it's even better. It's, this is the King. <laughs> it's not the Prince anymore. It's just the King's Trust. King. I think Charles doesn't get enough credit um, for this. Yes, he has helped Beatrice Elba. He's donated money to the, um, the Brit School. Adele, Billy Piper, he's, he has created stars, oh, but aside cool, from celebrities, you've got people, he looks after uh, kids who are coming out of foster homes, out yeah. of care. Yeah. When they're 18, you're, you're essentially you're chucked out and that's it, you're now an adult, Fall look after yourself. Yeah. yeah, he has helped millions of kids he in has. that system. Literally. Yeah, it's fantastic. Uh, no, so I think it's right though, isn't it? I mean, you know, the name, the brand, the Prince's Trust. Now, of course he'd carry on running it. We don't, you, you can still matter. call it the Prince's Trust yeah. and Harry and William have got nothing to do with it. Nobody's going to go, but he's the king now, you must change the name. Oh, someone I think, would. I think that's <laughs> true. <laughs> I, mean, I don't think they, they should have, be on this programme. Yeah. Surely, exactly, it's called the Prince's Trust. Carry on calling it the Prince's Trust. It doesn't it. matter how much he's involved the King's or not. Trust it's has a brand. More, the King's Trust has more kudos. But I wonder if the reason it has become the King's Trust is because William, I mean, we know that Harry wasn't going to take it over. You know, he's out of the picture. So it was only William that might have taken it over. Yeah, and so there is a suggestion or a suspicion that maybe William didn't want to, that he wanted to stick to his passions and his but great But it doesn't beliefs. have to be for a prince. That's what, I, that's what I keep on coming back to. Don't call it the... Just call it... Carry on calling it the Prince's yeah, Trust. Doesn't really that. matter. And, and, and anyway, there are other princes coming through, aren't there? Whatever their names are, the other little ones. <laughs> At some stage, they'll come through. And, you know... <laughs> And then it's the Prince Louis and George. Again. Louis and George. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. Louis and George. Louis and George. Well, they're too young to work, aren't they? No, but at some stage they will be working. <laughs> they will. They'll never work. They're royals. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Poor, Poor old busy king. He's got oh. all those libraries to work. <laughs> oh, well, Wax to unveil. Such yeah. a busy life. I think, I think we're, now, we're now going to go from the <laughs> sublime to the ridiculous because it's time for small talk. <laughs> First one. <laughs> now. Um, I think this is very relevant to what we were talking about earlier about, you know, old, lonely people. And this is all about supermarket checkouts. We all hate, I think, we all hate the, the automated the ones. That, oh, you know, hate something them. in your bag or all that, you know, oh, take, take... Like why? Do you? So I don't have to talk to cashiers. <laughs> well, that's, that's also why cashiers <laughs> like them. Yeah, yeah exactly. And also we can shout can avoid at them me. if they can afford you. <laughs> well, I think a lot of people... Um, you, there is quite a lot of evidence that older customers of supermarkets really hate it because sometimes just that awful. cashier is... A, they're not very good, you know, you need a bit of <coughs> tech know-how, and B, you lose some human interaction, yeah. um, which particularly the elderly customer would be sad about. But a supermarket chain which is dubbed as the normal than Waitrose, Booths, um, they have ditched all their machines and they've gone old school um, in their... They've got 28 stores in Lancashire, Yorkshire and Cheshire and they have realised that the personal touch uh, is what customers like. So I think Good hooray for, for Booths. Yes. Well, it'd be also interesting to see if, the, if shoplifting goes down. Well, with exactly, more... exactly what yeah. I was thinking. OK. Um, moving on. Can JJ, you... calm down. <laughs> TikTok. OK? Uh. No, stop it. Right, this is the new thing from it's TikTok. Just like Frankie Hell, don't stop, stop it. it. No, really. Oh, do stop this it. Is. It's a TikTok <laughs> no, thing. No. Yeah, you put loo, loo roll in your in your fridge 
and it's not about getting a cool, refreshing wipe. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> um, it's about soaking up the odours plaguing your fridge. Your, is your fridge plagued with odours? I don't, have a smell I don't think it is. It would right. be anyway, if I put a bog roll in there. It absorbs <laughs> the moisture in the air that can contribute to mould, mildew, and bad scents in your fridge. There we go. That is what TikTok is on about these days. Idiot. That sounds Brilliant. ridiculous. Yeah, and you, you know what's going to happen? It's going to get wet because of drips in yeah. your fridge, and then you're going to have loads of bits of bog roll all like <laughs> crumbling around your fridge. Yeah. Well, and Kevin, it's not good. I just heard Kevin saying he thought it was a good idea. Yeah, I no, think it's a brilliant idea. It's a ridiculous I'm, I'm going to go idea. back and put 16 <laughs> bog rolls in <laughs> whole bog <laughs> fridge full of them. Got us back to lockdown, <laughs> hiding the loo roll in your fridge. <laughs> From bog rolls to potholes. Oh. You know, like, <laughs> anyone that heads onto Britain's roads knows full well they're going to have to uh, buckle up for a bumpy ride as potholes have become a frustrating normality for drivers. But the state of the roads has gotten so, gotten so bad... What is this, America? So bad that vehicle <laughs> breakdowns caused by potholes have reached record levels this year, according to the RAC. It received almost 6,000 calls for pothole-related incidents from July to September, its highest total uh, for the summer period since it started collecting data in 2006. This is because councils no longer fix potholes. Yes, yeah, Well, they true. haven't got the money, though, have they? Also, the thing because about... Because they're paying themselves too much Also, money. the thing about potholes is it's so much worse for, for motorbikers and cyclists. Well, it is. On oh, two, it can be deadly. Don't care about cyclists, depending. Right, anyway. Um, <laughs> Isabel. Um, surgeons have performed the world's first whole eye transplant, wow. um, which is a massive medical breakthrough. Now, there is a downside to this, quite a big one, which is the eye doesn't yet work. Um, it, may, it sounds as if it may work, um, but the surgeons have said that it is just an enormous victory to have got to the stage where you can transplant Ooh. the eye and the blood vessels are functioning, and there's the hope of refining the process, I guess. I mean, can you imagine how amazing it would incredible. be if you could oh. restore people's sight? Yeah. I mean, that amazing. I just think is incredible. There's, it's so, a weird yeah. thing. You know when you fill in your donor's form? And the corneas. You tick, which, and I'm afraid to say that I didn't tick eyes. There was just something no, I did. I, I've done donating everything else, everything. but I couldn't do yeah. eyes. I know it's a sort of weird Well, speaking of eyes, uh, two people who helped make the iPhone. Uh, like there. your links. Oh, Thank you. Really. <laughs> 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 oh, the ones who tried to make it and get the to it. That was funky. <laughs> Imran Chowdhury and Bethany Bongiorno launched the AI pin. It's a wearable device, clips your clothes, as you can see here on screen. Right. Um, and it's got a camera in it and a microphone, so you talk into it. And rather than, rather than having to have your phone, it has a laser projection that goes onto your hand. So, like that. So it projects onto your hand and you use your fingers that like that to go through that. Amazing. Yeah, is it amazing? How much though? is it? Yes. How much is it? Is it? Amazing. Um, I haven't got a price for you, unfortunately. Oh, yeah, it's, uh, that's a bit disappointing. But I know. I'm sorry. I should have done I was my thinking research. Christmas I should present, have done my research you know. on it. I should have read the information about how much it costs. <laughs> yeah. Should have read the cost. Well, um, a million buy it. pounds. <laughs> <laughs> but it's on your hands. Just forget that. Use your phone. It's seven hundred dollars. It's $700. Well, that's all right. <laughs> and with no screen at all. Well, that's yeah, all we've got break time for. Uh, on the talk, I'm Daisy McAndrew. Thank you to our panellists, Penny Smith and Kevin O'Sullivan and JJ Anisiobi. They are both back at 11pm on What Just <laughs> Happened. And thank you to Isabel Oakshot. Now, we will see you again, I hope, on Monday night at our new normal time of 6. Bye-bye. Everybody. Hope you're well. Thanks for joining us. You're watching the Independent Republic of Mike Graham right here on Talk TV. Welcome to Friday Night with Nadine. Here on Primetime, we like to speak to the business people behind big moments. Good evening, I'm Piers Morgan, Uncensored in New York City. Very impressive, well played. I'm three days into the job. What have I done wrong? Yeah. And your face just stared <laughs> out at me. <laughs> ah. Me and you, conquer time. Who Back wins? Us. You. <laughs> Do you know what I love about tour today? We do it all. Sunak, Suella, scones. Are you actually speech rating for Rishi Sunak? I'm so rich. <laughs> but, uh, frankly, uh, I'm going to take the side of boozed up Brits against these pompous. What do you mean you're not going to support Mayor Jose no, Luis? No, I am Sanz. not. Stop pandering.
belonging to the NIMBYs, to the naysayers and the National Society for the Preservation of the Habitat of the Lesser Spotted Newt. The problem lies in the bureaucracy. Yeah. It's almost like those highly done. paid consultants don't really know what they're doing. The first thing they teach you in weather school is never confuse dog walkers with doggers. Twitter, you sons of <laughs> Can you please reinstate my account? Yeah. Thank you. There's a threat that you'd be worried about. <gasps> So are you saying that you're being overwhelmed, that you're inundated? We are really working hard for you, and we're just asking patients to be patient with us. Are we only going to be trusting sources like Meta and Google and Facebook and X, uh, formerly known as Twitter? Where is our, where